Next we have problem five. Um, so the question says, figure shows electric field lines arising from two small charged particles P and Q. Um, so the first one is that the charge on P is smaller than the charge on Q, and the second one is that the force on P is smaller than the force on Q. And we're trying to figure out which of the two is true. Um, so I see that there's more field lines coming out of Q than there are out of P. So um, pretty, we know that the stronger electric field is associated with lines that are closer together. Um, and we also know that electric field is stronger for a larger charge. Um, if you don't kind of have an intuitive feel for that yet, that's fine. You can still see it from an equation um, where I have that the electric field strength is KQ over R squared. So it says that my electric field is directly proportional to my charge. So a bigger charge will have a stronger electric field. Okay, so one is definitely true. Um, we can also, it's not one of the questions, but we can also here tell the sign of the two charges because we know that electric field points away from positive charge. Both P and Q are going to have a positive charge. Um, the real question, I think, and why this people struggled with this one is part two. Um, so um, this is a Newton's third law question. Um, and I am quite fond of putting these types of questions on tests. So you should be prepared to see it on probably at least half of your tests this semester, um, which is forces are any time you see something like this is wrong. Right. If you were talking about the force exerted on kind of a mutual force, the force that P pushes on Q is equal and opposite to the force that Q pushes on P. If you have a mosquito that hits a semi truck, the mosquito push pushes the semi truck just as much as the semi truck pushes the mosquito. Um, so those two things are always this is always going to be false that the force on P due to Q is always equal and opposite to the force on Q due to P. So A is the correct answer. All right, next is problem nine. Um, another electric field question. So I am, and I don't know if you noticed this, but this right here should be a minus. It shouldn't be a plus. I have a positive 5 microcoulomb charge on the left and a negative 4 microcoulomb charge on the right. Um, and I'm looking for the electric field at this spot, which is not directly between them. It's closer to the negative charge than it is to the positive charge. <clears throat> so first things first is we need to figure out what direction fields are pointing. Um, and actually, looking at this, I'm just going to slide up here because you might have just watched this. Um, this is pretty analogous to here where I have a negative charge on the right and a positive charge on the left. And we found that the two electric field vectors had to point to the right. So let's just redo that, but we kind of know that we what we expect to get, um, which is that um, I'll just do these two together. So electric field lines point away from positive charges. So my E plus is going to point to the right. And these two together, my electric field lines point toward negative charges. So E minus points to the right as well. And we know that the net field vector is going to be, because both of these point to the right, we know that they're going to add together. And my net field vector is going to be a, a vector that's longer than either of, P, either of these two. They're going to add together. That's going to be important later because I think the reason that a lot of people mess this up is because they went ahead and put a negative in for the value of the Q when they're, when they're problem solving. But when you're using Coulomb's law, or here you're using the electric field formula that goes with Coulomb's law, when you're solving these equations for point charges of the electric force and the electric field, you're not using the sign of the charge. You are using your brain to figure out whether or not things add together or they are different from each other. You're not using the sign of the charge in the problem. So let's go through and do the formula and make sure that we know what we're doing here. So the formula for point charges is E is KQ over R squared. 
So that's the equation that we want to use, and we know that our net vector is going to be the length of this plus the length of that. So I have that E net is K Q1 over R squared plus K Q2 over R squared. I'm going to go ahead and just take the absolute value of both of these for the reason that I just said, which is that I want the length of this vector plus the length of this vector. I know that this here isn't a minus because these two are going to add together. Um, if this question was asking for the directions, um, then you would put a little thing and you'd know that it pointed to the right and you would add that as your direction. But we only have magnitudes as our answer, so um, that's what that is. Um, okay, so here's my K is 8.99, 10 to the 9th. Q1 is 5, 10 to the negative 6 coulombs divided by R. That's the distance here, so that's going to be 30 centimeters, which is 0.3 meters squared, plus K899, 10 to the 9th. And here my Q, and remember I'm going to ignore the negative, it's 4 to the negative 6, my 4 times 4 microcoulombs, and that distance is 20 centimeters, so that's 0.3 meters. And um, if you plug all this into your calculator, you get 15 centimeters.